This is Weirdly Enough, your regular podcast for strange stories and amazing facts. Delivered straight to your favorite podcast directory and at weirdlyenough.com. Now, here are your hosts, Andy and Len. Whoa, you never thought we'd be back, but we are. Yes, the uh, the Weirdly Enough podcast is finally back again after nearly a year away. Uh, we had a break for COVID. Um, why? I don't know. Why, why did we break for COVID? Oh, yes, we couldn't meet up in, uh, in each other's houses for, for the longest bit. It kind of started about September that they brought in that rule, and then it went on to what, nearly December, and then they brought it in again. So uh, that that was happening for a long time, and then the kind of summer came along, didn't it? And, yeah, yeah, and we just said, "Now nah, we'll we'll pause for a little bit of time," but we're back uh, and uh, raring to go with loads of uh, weird facts and uh, weird things for you. Remember, you can follow us. We're on Facebook. Uh, I can't even remember where we are on Facebook. I think if you search for uh, "Weirdly Enough Podcast." On Facebook, you'll find us. Search Google, uh, any search engines for Weirdly Enough, you'll, you'll will get our, uh, our website. It has all the old um, archive, I think is what you call it, uh, seasons. We did two seasons and it was, they were they were really short. Very short. So I mean, should, we, should this just be a continuation of two? No, that's a season three. We're is very, it right? Yes, okay. it's very much a new era. <laughs> um, I mean, we're best in, uh, it's, it's what I would call a sort of technological command center. A command center. A command post. I must say it's quite echoey, the command center. Yeah. I worried about that at the start. And then I thought, no, that kind of adds to it in, in a strange little way. It's, it's got this echoey ambience and feel to it um do you know what we should do we we, we we need it more of a shtick i think um do you ever say that guy james english the podcaster no i haven't got well, I've, I've seen him a couple of times but i haven't really listened to him i must listen no but, his, his format's different from ours it would be interviews right okay but the start of every interview he always goes boom and we're off <laughs> boom and we're off see the thing is and you say his format's different to ours Ours would be like that as well, but we can't get people to interview. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He tends to interview really weird, you know, like sort of either gangsters or strange kind of entrepreneurs and <laughs> I must like check it female out. wrestlers and you know kinds of funny people like that. You know, there's a few podcasts I listen to at the minute, but a lot of those kind of seasonal podcasts are away for the summer. Um, I, I listen a good interview. One is uh, the one Emily Dean does on the Times. Walking the dog. Wrong. It's uh, she, she takes people for a dog walk, mm. and uh, no, that's not dogging. Sorry, that's something else completely. But no, she takes people for a dog walk around a park, uh, and they chat about stuff. It's very good. Are these famous people or just no, random? just complete random? Or she just meet somebody in the street and say, "Can we go?" No, no, it is. It's it's people like Mark Gatiss was on. And oh, wow, yeah, can't yeah. even remember now. But they are good, uh, good names. Uh, it's it's well worth looking at. Yeah. Uh, the other thing uh, you can find us on, we're on Twitter. We're uh, weirdly enough, PC uh, is our Twitter handle. Um, and uh, we don't use Instagram. We have an account there, but we don't use it. You can search for us on all the usual um, feeds. I think that's the, that's how you call the podcast feed. So uh, do, do track us down. I'm just going to change the settings here slightly and bring up the timer, if I can do that. So what's, what's today about? Well, basically, to set the scene, I, I mean, whenever I was a child, and even now, sometimes I like to listen to the radio late at night, <laughs> and there's all kinds of interesting things that you come across, especially, you know, in shortwave and, and things like that. Okay. Now, there is a phenomenon... Do, do you listen to shortwave radio? Yes. For the purposes of this episode, I do. Oh, yeah. right, okay. That's, okay. Because just... I have... I have had, like, in the past, the shortwave radio set. I'll have never been able to get anything. I've thought, maybe you need some... Sort I'm an of... avid listener of sort of shortwave radio. Okay, yeah. right, yes. Okay. Okay, <laughs> for, for the purposes of... See, this is a narrative. Yes, of course. Right, I'm, yeah, I'm that's, setting that's up a narrative here. <laughs> right, you see... Best, now, I've never come across this, yeah. but there's a thing that started happening uh, during the height of the Cold War. Mm. And radio hams, radio lovers around the world started to notice strange broadcasts. And... They couldn't identify where they were coming from. Was and this Lord Haw Haw? No, this is later than him. Th- this, you know, you say, well, this is a slightly different thing. That was that was more kind of black propaganda. All right, yeah. That's when um, Lord Haw Haw used to come on and go, Germany calling, and mm-hmm. yeah, you know, uh, and all that sort of jazz. But and that's a whole fascinating topic in itself. But the mail's one for another, another day. Mm. Um, 
But basically, these were often weird melodies. Right. Or a okay. beeping sound, or a strange woman's voice counting in German, or the creepy voice of a child reciting letters in English. Right. And they have all kinds of funny names. Well, these aren't official names. These were names that were given to them by the, the enthusiasts, yeah. um, such as the Lincolnshire Poacher. And that was so called because the opening bars were like a an old folk tune, right? Called the Lincoln Lincolnshire po- Poacher. I've just this is really unscientific, but I find the Lincolnshire Poacher here on yeah. uh, Wikipedia. Can we play it? Sound like? <laughs> oh, that was creepy if you were hearing that. So does that just go on and on? Or it goes on and on. I've, I've, I've well. heard creepier than that. Um, but basically, I mean, the consensus is yeah. that really, there's they think it's busy sending messages to agents in the field. Right. And it's like, it's all on code. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, another sort of idea is, and this is one that I would probably... Can I reach across? Oh, yeah, certainly, yeah. Sorry, I just want to turn down and all. You could almost call it a right around, couldn't you? Oh, yes. We don't do that till later on. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, I've, I've lost the train of my thought. Yeah, yes. there's one uh-huh. called The Buzzer, which okay. is a, a one that broadcasts from northern Russia. Right. And it's it's like constantly a buzzing noise, and there's people saying strange things. Um, but basically, they think it's yeah. basically... To, it's a combination of something that issues kind of orders to Russian military units in Russia, but also all the random stuff is to make sure the frequency is occupied so that other people don't occupy the frequency. Right. If that makes any sense. And uh, is it... What, what am I thinking? Is it a code, or what are they, what are they actually broadcasting? Well, the Lincolnshire Poacher... Um, now, they reckon that's actually broadcast... That's actually a UK one that's yeah. broadcast out of Cyprus. And it it's that way kind of weird tune that yeah. introduces it. Uh, and then it goes to a pre-recorded English accent with female voice right. reading groups of five numbers. For example, <laughs> O, two, five, eight, eight, and the final number in each group is spoken at a higher pitch. Right. Uh huh. Um, and then the buzzer is another funny one. That's the one I was talking about. Yeah. Um, it's it's broadcasting a a buzz tone at a rate of approximately twenty five tones per minute. Twenty four hours a day but then it breaks and you can hear voices in the background yeah um because people can have heard you know that's all in russian obviously people saying i am one for free not receiving the generator that stuff comes from the hardware room so it's probably <laughs> people yeah literally just chatting away in the background but i don't know if that's accidental or on purpose or that or is, what it is like very you know, strange yeah it is very strange maybe they're leaving the mics on all the time yeah um it's it's very they like, say there's different fit fairies to this. Um, another fairy uh, is that the buzzers to do with it's like a dead hand single signal, sorry, and it'll trigger a, a nuclear response if the signal is interrupted if there's a nuclear attack against Russia. Right, uh-huh. which is a weird one. Now there's a thing called the cornet or the conut. Sorry, I keep calling it the cornet. It's the conut project. The cor- <laughs> it's, it's yeah. not, I I don't know why. Right, um, it's. It was run by a guy called Akin Fernandez. Yeah. And he basically what that is, is it's recordings of random number stations from around the world. <laughs> um, you can actually listen to it on Spotify. Right, okay. So if you yeah. look up, Sp- yeah, if, if you Google like Conant Project Spotify, you can actually listen to them. And it's got like a, a disc release. Was yeah, it, yeah. Was it a CD or something? Like 15th yeah. anniversary uh, edition came out in April 2013 with a bur- booklet and everything, pictures of number stations. So yeah. you could pro- I mean, you could probably order that on Amazon or whatever, you know. Yeah, you, you, but, you, yeah. and, and I know there are websites where you get the, the, the sampled examples of number stations. Um, now, there's a quote here from this guy, Fernandez. And he says, he was fascinated by the mystery of number stations. He says, it was so weird, I wanted to know more about them. And he put three years of his life into researching those. Yeah. And he says, once you hear them, it has an effect on you. He says, I never expected to be talking about it until you know, 17 years after hearing it for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a weird thing because it hasn't, really, it hasn't really impacted on popular culture. There's not that many 
kind of references to it. You know, I mean, there was a film um, that was made a few years ago um, called The Number Station, and it was really like a it was like a thriller kind of thing. Um, let's see, um, who was it that directed that? That's a good question. Um, that's very very unprofessional, but yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's come up in weird films. It was samples from the the Conan project yeah. were used in films um there's a famous ca- uh, cameron crow film called vanilla sky which is a very weird thing it's i think tom cruise is in that right yeah and it's yeah. all kind of like okay. a psychological thriller and yeah. the view samples from the number stations and that so the actual live recordings from those number stations are in the film yeah yeah, yeah. and the afx twin apparently has used it as well yeah. um so he he's he's big into that yeah the, the name the, pro- the name of the project the Kona project comes from a mishearing of the Czech world, sorry, the Czech word Konak, right? And uh-huh. so it was as mistranslated as as Konak. Yeah. So it's like they will say all this random stuff and then go and right <laughs> and but that like, Konak is the word for end then. Yeah, yeah I think that's an and Czech. Mm. Um. So yeah. Um. And and quite often um they'll be like weird kind of random phrases mixed up with. Uh, random sequences of numbers and it, it's basically yeah it's 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 they reckon some of these could be dummy stations as well just right. to confuse you you know yeah yeah you know so um that's pretty much it i would say like the know? um apex fan is we, we could do i call the weird totally just about apex fan he's, he's very, yeah, yeah. a very strange character but um yeah it's a song called mangle 11 or a, a song i said a track called mangle 11 and the sample appears about five minutes into it it's, uh, it's from the konek konet project but uh, they the person here on reddit hasn't found the exact link so there you go yeah if you want yeah. to, if you want to listen to that go and find it um I, I, I haven't listened to apex twin in a long time i used to listen to a bit of window liquor i liked window liquor. oh yes a very oh. disturbing value yeah I, I, I love the fact the video doesn't it lasts about nine minutes until the actual song starts. If you look it up, you hmm. look it up on YouTube, uh, Window Liquor. Maybe we'll put links to that. We'll, we'll also put links to the Conet uh, Spotify if, if we get a chance. Yeah, I have okay. to take notes of this and do all this. This will be me, my little project for tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Uh, so anything else on number stations, though? I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think we've covered most of things. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it does seem to be... <laughs> I mean, there there's a thing called um, one time pods, yeah. and they're basically like little notebooks, and they reckon spies. Again, I don't know if this is still used, but this was a thing that was used in the Cold War, where you basically be listening in to a particular number station, and you get a code, and that would be you, and then it would be sort of like letters responding to num- numbers and things in, like in that. Pod, so yeah. it would be like going, going, I don't know, going to X, Y, and Z, yeah. so spy uh-huh. kind of stuff, yeah. yeah. Uh, if uh, anybody's listening and has any uh, information on, on number system we'd love to hear from you we'll put it out into another episode um, also if you've got recordings of any of them uh, I know some things are kind of copyright issues and we don't want to just play stuff out that's why we're, we're directing you towards that Spotify link rather than uh, rather than ourselves playing it but uh, yeah um, we would love to hear from you it's podcast at weirdlyenough.com or contact us through the socials. Uh, I'll be back in just a little minute with some stuff about the Olympic Games. So have you been watching the Olympic Games at all? I've been trying. I'm not really a big fan of track and field, Yeah, to well, be honest. And, I, I mean, my only exposure has really been I would have a wee listen to Five Live maybe first thing in the morning and they're, they're all very enthusiastic about it and yeah uh-huh. they, oh we've won more medals and right. I wins like I'm not quite as cynical as Pierce Morgan would be yeah uh-huh. you right. know so uh-huh. I really, really rate gold gold you know, medals they only rate gold is that yeah, yeah. yeah which yeah. I mean it's understandable when, you, when you're as, uh, as athletic as Pierce Morgan yes. anyway, he's uh-huh. obviously well qualified <laughs> well, to, well qualified the judge you're right well like our very own weirdly enough podcast the 2020 Olympic Games was postponed because of COVID-19 however the games are now well underway and there's plenty of variety in sport on offer uh, and this has got me thinking of events that used to be in the modern Olympics but aren't anymore so Not here course. we go first one is uh, and this was as recently as 1982 solo synchronized swimming 
a strange sport of solo synchronized swimming was a staple of the game. Synchronized swimming is weird enough, but to do it on your own is just plain bonkers. But how is it synchronized? Because you're not synchronized with volleyball. I know, yeah. That makes literally no sense. No, that's, like, that's like solo orchestra. <laughs> Uh, and uh, th- this came up quite a lot the plunge for distance the what? the plunge for distance it was an event in the 1904 games in St. Louis, Missouri saw a competition combining the long jump with diving basically competitors would dive into a pool and see how long they could glide underwater in less than a minute right. so they, ha- they were able to stay underwater for a minute and then they had to come up uh, and the event was won by an American called William Dickey uh, with a distance of 62 and a half feet. Well, see, to be fair, it makes more sense than... I'm, I'm struggling with the concept of solo synchronized. Yeah. I'm, I, I, that's like... I, it's, it's like fab fun. Yeah. Or wet dry. Yeah. It's just, you know... <laughs> uh, live pigeon shooting was one with real well, pigeons. We need to bring that back. Avian Slaughter was the name of the game back uh, in the Paris 1900 games yeah. where contestants would be eliminated if they missed two birds in a row. The Pigeon Murder Fest was won by Leon uh, de Linden of, uh, of Belgium. Shooting sports actually uh, came up a lot in my research with that uh, running deer uh, shooting uh, a game. Uh, thankfully, uh, this early 20th century sport didn't mm. actually use real deers but moving targets instead. So they were like pictures of deers and you had to shoot at them do you know what I want them to bring back what joysting well one thing you might quite like is dual fighting right Uh, dual fighting is if it's more your thing rather than shooting at animals uh, this was a sport that was included in the 1912 games in Stockholm contestants uh, however didn't fire at, at each other uh, health and safety killjoys uh, made sure mannequins dressed in frock coats were used instead. Oh, see, that's no good. You want a proper gel. <laughs> yeah. With like a, you know, oh, that'll be fine, you'll be good. And back to Paris again. Uh, you know dog grooming seems to be quite a business these days. Yeah, yeah. You see groomers cropping up everywhere. Well, back in, in the 1900 games in Paris, um, poodle clipping was a contested sport. Right. The event drew 6,000 spectators. 6,000 people went to watch. 120 competitors clip as many dogs as they could in two hours. Yeah, that'd be pretty good to watch. The winner was Avril Lafoyle, uh, who got the goal with 17 poodles clipped. Mm. The Paris ga- Games uh, attracted a lot of different sports. They even had events for uh, equine long jump and high jump. So they had horses doing long jumps and high jumps. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm sure you've heard the stories about the Olympic Village uh, and all the saucy things going on behind closed well, doors. Uh, have yeah, you? yeah. There's, uh, did I did I dream this? I don't know if I'm like, even allowed to talk about this. On, this? on a family yeah. allegedly family yeah. friendly podcast. Um, but uh, the, there's like oh, these sex beds. There's like these kind of beds that the wall they only hold the weight of one person. Yes, and then they collapse. Yeah, I've heard of that. I've heard of that rumor. Yeah. Very apparently, apparently that is a thing. <laughs> it's today. Is that that's today of the old um, the old uh, cool buds. I think they're made of cardboard. Yes. Yeah. Well, so if you do the old one two buck on my shoe, it will just you know. Well, did collapse, you know? Did you know that the Olympic organizers have been giving out condoms at the games since nineteen eighties? Right. It started in Seoul in nineteen eighty eight as a way to prevent the spread of HIV. Yeah. Uh, all the games since then have given out packs. Uh, to Olympians, including 150,000 available during the London 2012 Games. Oh, so you don't want them coming back and having wins? Yes. With, like, random people, like, you know. 70,000 prophylactics. Pro- that's one of the words I can't say. <laughs> were issued to competitors during the Sydney Games. Uh, I think that was back in 2000, but a shortage quickly occurred and a rush order of a further 20,000 was made available to the Randy Sportsman and Woman. There you are. They, they had to actually order more. The Rio games give out the most, 450,000. Some of the games even had uh, mottos for their rubber supply, including of Beijing, where the slogan was faster, higher, and stronger. I'm surprised they have the energy, to be yeah. honest. You know, you, I suppose, you got, got to respect them for that. Uh, the I'd to- probably rather have a cup of tea, to be honest, after <laughs> an exhausting day on the, the track. The Tokyo games have been... Uh, 
an exception to the avail uh, no exception sorry to the availability of free condoms however organizers say that they're just souvenirs and they should take them home stating that competitors must avoid unnecessary forms of contact and uh, with a two meter social distancing limit it does make sexual contact all but impossible i would think hmm. So they're giving 160,000 rubber johnnies to 1,500 competitors. Sorry, I'm writing this like a, um, like a tabloid. Oh, I yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More than 10 per person. I'll leave it to you to draw your own conclusions as to how, how many are it going to It sounds absolutely exhausting, to be honest. <laughs> yes, Especially you'd that a cup of tea or an IPA. Yeah, yeah, a, a nice chilled IPA it might be more, more than fun looking. Are you supposed to chill IPA? I, think you, I, I, I don't think you're supposed to, but I do. Yeah. And do you know what? If any <laughs> listeners have a problem with that, they can contact me at www. I don't really care what you think. Dot com. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you know I do like a nice Sorry idea, to come across passive aggressive, you know, but have you heard um, Stuart Lee's stuff on on uh, IPAs? It does really good. Is he? Pr- I think he's anti IPA. Is he? Or? No, it's kind of. He's kind of saying that it, it's alcoholism hidden as oh I, I'm a connoisseur really and he, he's talking about like, it's like wine wine's kind of like that as the well the thirsty like, judge it's, it's you know yeah. 9.8% and it, such and it's, such it's, it's, you see it's percent. part of that subdivision of kind of posh alcoholism mm. that gin's a little bit like that as well you know you yeah. get people on the, oh I'm in a gin club look at me in my <laughs> Facebook post <laughs> club. no offence if you're under that you know because yeah. I do you know people that are I used to like you know, Jen. Going on about your botanicals and all that sort of It's stuff. just got daft, Jen. It's okay. Like, I mean, I... I don't know. I, I've always been a bear man, to be honest. Yeah. Uh-huh. No, nice IPA. Definitely. Definitely. Nice IPA. What was the... the do you remember the, the had loggers in the day that had a, like a young lady on them? Was that Tenants? Tenants, yeah. Back I think, day? I think it did. That's, That's pretty much before like, my time. I'd be 19 at least, yeah. I'd have those ring pills that you kind of... You pulled it right back. I, I think, remember. I, I think we need to bring that back. Yeah, you know, those cans would be like um, collectors. But what you could stuff. do to avoid ac- accusations of sexism, you could have young young gentlemen as well. Yeah. So you know, if you're a bit sort of, you know, I'm amb- amb- or whatever, you know, you could just go for whatever you want. Like, you know. it's like the nuts behind the bar. Do you remember yeah. those? Yeah. Huh. Hot nuts, yes. No, well, I mean the nuts that were on a card. Oh board, yes, and yes. You kept taking one off, and it would. Show a, a lady behind it. Yeah, actually. you normally Peggy Mitchell standing there. You don't get them all, Pab. Well, you meant Peggy Mitchell in the photos. Well, I, well, I suppose back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you for joining us. We'll be back again next week with a podcast all about mud floods. The Great Mud Flood. Wow. Um, I, I don't know if we should even go there, but we are. Oh, we're never uh, afraid to shy away from anything on Weirdly Enough. Speak to you next week, folks. Remember, check out weirdlyenough.com or check the socials for more from us. Thanks for listening to Weirdly Enough. Remember to subscribe to get the latest edition as soon as it drops. And don't forget to leave a review. Email us about anything we've discussed or with your own weird tale at podcast at weirdlyenough.com.